Okay, so in here, I've got a whole bunch of scraps and everything else. I don't even have a spoon with me <laughs> that I can show you. We've got, I don't know, some green onions, there's celery, there's some broccoli, there's carrots in here. Um, a little bit of everything, actually. Anything that we peel or cut, it's in there. And then there's raw chicken carcasses, rotisserie chicken carcasses, and then just random little bits of, or there we are, random bits of chicken carcasses. So I'm going, and I filled it up with water. Well, it's not full, but I filled it up as much as I think my stove can handle. There's salt in here and some black peppercorns. That is it. I'm going to simmer this on the stove for probably two days, adding water as I go. And I'll bring you guys back when this is done and we're on the next step. Okay, here is day, it's been 12 hours. Let's see if I can, here we go. And let me tell you the smell, oh. It smells so good. You can see the water level was about there. It's gone down this much. And I am going to add some more water to this. Okay, so here is 12 hours later. We'll be back. Okay, so I said we were going to uh, cook this for two days. I actually cooked it for four days. So here me here I am on the fourth day. I'm straining it. I st this is how I strain mine. I put it through a bigger strainer. Actually, it's not even a strainer. It's a steamer pot. And I put it through there. And then what I do is I get a, sorry, I'm trying to do this as I'm doing it. I'm getting another strainer and a bowl because what I'm going to do is put that stuff into that bowl. So then it can drip some more. Why? Because you're still going to get stock out of that. Don't get rid of that until you're done straining it out. Now some people put this through a cheese cheesecloth, pillowcase, whatever. You, you do you. This is how I do mine. I strain it this way first. Get all the big, get all the big chunks. And then get that out of my way so that can sit and strain. Then I get a fine mesh strainer. I'm very carefully because the little handle on the top that broke, I pour it through. Very carefully making sure I get all those little tiny bits of sediment out of it. And you'd, you'd be shocked how much you actually do get out of this. I probably could have put it through a second time and got more, but I didn't. I only did it the one time. Now I keep doing this until the entire pot is gone. I only do it for the first little while so you guys can see how I do it. And then again, very carefully, so I don't tip the strainer. I'm trying to make sure you guys can still see, because I'm realizing, hey, I'm probably blocking the camera. But I need to see what I'm doing, because this stuff is hot. Okay. Now I'm doing mine in liter jars, quart jars, whatever you call it. Just pouring it in. God, look, look at that coloring. And you see how the side there, in the whatever corner that is, I can't even... Anyway, on the corner of the screen there, you're going to see that pot. It's still sitting there straining. So we're going to fill that up one inch headspace. No, I do not remove the fat. Go ahead and remove the fat if you want to. I don't. I figure if I don't want the fat in it, I can pop it in the fridge and then I can dispose of it at that, day, that, that time. So here we go. Getting it all nice and filled up. Got to get another jar to put the funnel in. Face cloth, no, not face cloth, tea towel. Although face cloth would probably work quite nicely because then you could just wash it. But anyway, we're going to get a paper cloth. We're going to wipe the rim. Don't need to debubble it because it's liquid. If you want to debubble it, debubble it. But I'm not going to get the rim nice and clean. Get the lids on it. Drop it in so you go get a new one after you rinse that one off and put it back in hot water. And then, because I do it every time, I forget my rings. Go get my rings. Figure out where to put them. I move them after we're done all this. Burn my fingies. 
because that is hot. Into the canner they go. Okay, so again, you... Uh, oh, I had to fix that, the sound. Okay, so again, because I have a regulator, I have to wait till it's at 11 PSI, not 10. 11, if you have a weighted gauge, that is when you use 10 pounds. But because I use PSI, it is 11. You want to make sure it is at 11. We're almost there. Come on. We can do it. There we go. I think it was there, actually. 25 minutes on the clock. Look at this. Every time I do that, guys, you can see what time I'm canning at. Okay, so then I take the weight off, and then I let it sit for five minutes. And then I crack the lid open. I let it sit for five minutes. And then I take the lid off. Now, why do I do that? To let the canner come down and let the jars um, come back down to. Sorry, uh, words are escaping me at this precise moment. I don't even know why. But it just helps with the sealing. It really does. Don't just let it drop down to pressure and then crack the lid open. No, do it in steps. Now, these are heavy, especially the ones on the back of the canner, like the back canner there, because I had to pull them out and then try and pull. Oh, it, it's hard to use that spot on the stove. But anyway, so here we go. Look at that glorious, glorious chicken stock cooked for four days. Drove us nuts because it smelled so good. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will be talking to you again pretty soon.